Done. Thank you, Josh. Uh, welcome, good afternoon, and welcome everybody to, uh, as Josh noted, the second in our virtual Lunch and Learn series programming. Uh, we're really pleased that you could be with us today, and we hope that you uh, continue to do so on a monthly basis. You can visit our website at www.hmana.org, where you can see the series schedule and learn more about the Hawk Migration Association of North America's initiatives and our news. Um, you can sign up for our e-newsletter on the site, and you might want to even consider making a small donation to support the work that we do. As a small nonprofit, uh, every bit counts, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, we're really excited to, as Josh mentioned, to welcome today Dr. Brian Wargo. Uh, Brian wears numerous hats when it comes to raptors and hawk watching. He's a Hamana board member. He chairs two of our committees, uh, Data and Education and Conservation. He's the Eastern Flyway editor for our Hawk Migration Studies Journal. He's also the president of the Audubon, oh, sorry, the uh, Allegheny Plateau Audubon Society. And he's the Saturday counter at the Allegheny Front Hawk Watch both of which are in Pennsylvania. So again, we're really happy to have him here. He's gonna be talking, as you know, about hawkcount.org, Hamana's freely available database of raptor migration information. That's really integral to everything that we do. Uh, so again, welcome. We hope to see you come back again and again and uh, take it away, Brian. Thank you very much. And uh, I just wanted to mention uh, what a great job Josh is doing. He's the uh, wizard behind the curtain that's uh, engineering uh, and taking care of all of the technical stuff and he's always doing a great job. So thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned, I wear a bunch of hats and every one of these hats, uh, being the Eastern Flyway editor, chairing the education and conservation or the data committee are gonna use hawkcount.org. The centrality of hawkcount.org to hawk watching is really what this is about. As a Saturday counter, if any of you count, you're using hawkcount.org. If you're a, a hawk watcher and you don't know about hawkcount.org, your world is about to expand. Uh, so that's really what we're going to be talking about today. And we're going to start off with a little bit of history. So if we think of hawk watching in general, uh, we, we really need to go back, let's say, 100 years ago or so. And I, I've taken a picture here from the Library of Congress, uh, 1940, New Mexico. And, and you can see how people lived back then. And, you know, it, we, we live differently today. We have more stuff and access to that stuff. If you look at um, this family around the table here, you can see their table is a little bit older. Uh, this gentleman's um, shirt is a bit dirty. And the reason for that is because because agrarian living is hard and you're working for your food. And this whole family is probably working to get all of these items on their table. It looks like they might be eating, uh, you know, chicken or something like that here. Well, more than likely, they didn't go to the store for that chicken. They probably went outside and harvested one of their chickens. So we always have to be able to go back and, and think about perspective. And that perspective can often be a little bit um, discouraging when we think about it from our modern view. So when we talk about the history of hawk counting, so hawk watching and hawk counting are very similar. Um, originally hawk watching was really about looking up in the sky and protecting those chickens that maybe that you had. At least that might be the case for this gentleman. He's going to raise his rifle up in the air and say, hey, this That hawk is production here, and that's how I feed my family. That hawk has got to go. And uh, so he would shoot the hawks. Art. Um, we know that there is going to be uh, hawks being killed, but who's counting? Well, 
if you are a hunter or if you live in the country and you would like to shoot that rabbit and harvest that rabbit and provide food for your family, you might feel that that, which might be a red tail hawk here, it's hard to tell, but it, it's got a red tail, looks like a sizable bird. Um, you know, he is, he is taking that rabbit off your land and you're thinking, I got to get rid of that hawk. So who's counting? Well, hunters would be, would, would be counting uh, hawks. And um, actually, I'd just like to go on um, and talk about the memoirs of Henry, Henry Edward Davis. And uh, these are his hunting memoirs. And he has a chapter uh, where he talks about shooting hawks or hawk shooting. So we, thought, we think about hawk counting today as very different or hawk watching. And I'm just gonna read a little bit of this. So uh, Davis's relentless pursuit of hawks may seem incredible um, and even abhorrent to modern readers. However, during much of the first part of the 20th century, particularly in traditional agrarian communities, predators, whether birds or mammals, were viewed in a negative light. Davis and his peers considered predators to be threats to domestic and game animals and hunted them without restraint. Indeed, Davis considered hawks his avowed enemies. And shooting hawks was a common practice at the time. And few jumped to the task with as much relish and with uh, as much lethal results as Davis himself. Okay, so, you know, there's a different perspective that many of us have today that um, has changed just recently. And when I say recently, um, first of all, let me, let me just go back to who's counting. Well, we, we have to remember states are counting. The, the national um, or federal government would also be counting. They're paying money for these vermin to be exterminated. And this is from the yearbook of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And uh, you can see listed here the dollar figures that they're going to be paying for each state for, and I've highlighted, well, there's some highlighted words here, for killing. We're talking about hawks. And remember, this is being encouraged. Um, this is, for, for if we have any young people on, on the line today, th this might seem a little bit odd that you would get paid for killing wildlife like this. Um, here is, I hope this bottom part shows up on your screen, but it's from Boy's Life, May 1955. And it's the tale of, Billy and Wes, and their tangle with a hawk. And in, in this caption here, you could see uh, they're being terrorized by this big bird above the farm here. And they're going to do their job, right? They're, they're, they've got their binoculars out, so they're watching hawks. And they're going to practice shooting some cans. So when the time comes, bam, crack, they take care of that hawk. And then over here, you could see mom thinks they're a hero. Thanks, boys. We'll have some peace around here now. And it's all thanks to Super X 22 ammunition. So, you know, this was encouraged. You know, this, this is not an, an animal that you're going to allow to be next to your farm. And, uh, you know, it's a different mindset. Now, I was born in 1971. Um, so the next slide is pretty interesting to me because um, look at this. It says, uh, y'all know your birds and don't shoot protected hawks. And this is from the Pennsylvania Game Commission, probably Western Pennsylvania, where I'm from. Now let's keep in mind that um, in 1970, diurnal raptors gained protection in Pennsylvania. Before this, and this is incredible, you would get $5 for every goshawk shot. I've seen very few goshawk in my life. And it's such an exciting bird to see. And yet the Pennsylvania Game Commission was paying $5 bounty for every one that you shot. So uh, we're gonna, and, and I just love this picture here. Look at this, this red tail hawk. They really went red here, right? But it's just a beautiful inscription of this red tail. But the PA Game Commission shifts to educating about hawks instead of shooting them. 
even at the national level, let's, here we go. Um, this is from the US, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And remember, that's from the federal Department of the Interior. We now have legal protection for raptors and a lot of other species and a lot of other game birds. Um, national laws that are going to make killing hawks illegal. So we've got the Lacey Act of 1900. Most of us think of that as being you're not allowed to illegally traffic in wildlife that are really indigenous to the United States. It's kind of like, look, the United States owns this property, okay? The Migratory uh, Bird uh, Treaty Act of 1918. Now that one, we just responded from the Education and, and Conservation Committee um, on July 20th. We, we made comments. They are trying to weaken these established laws, mainly in favor of industry. Um, actually, all of these are in danger from the last few years, uh, a lot of pressure to roll them back. We've got the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act, 1940, and of course, the Landmark Endangered Species Act of 1973. So uh, part of the, uh, Part of what the Education and Conservation Committee uh, tries to do is try tries to keep up with these and and comment when when we have something uh, that we can offer. All right, so look, we now are going about counting hawks, but in a different way. Instead of shooting them, and that's what hawk wa watching was originally, it was shooting hawks out of the sky. So now we have the iconic Hawk Mountain Sanctuary for the preservation of all wildlife. But of course, they're going to choose this bird right here, some kind of hawk, we'll say. And look at the name. It's a sanctuary about hawks. It happens to be called Hawk Mountain here, right? And this is a major, major shift. I, I happen to love this old placard. But we have this shift from killing to counting. And let's just go over a few that um, most of us would recognize. Hawk Mountain Sanctuary, 1934. That's when they start gathering data, not about how many hawks they shot, how many hawks were migrating past. Uh, Wagner's Gap in Pennsylvania, 1952. We've got Rockfish Gap, 1969. These are not um, every hawk watch in chronological order. These are just some of the bigger ones. And I deal with these because as the Eastern Flyway editor, I have to look at their data each year. And I love going back and, and looking at 34 or 52 or 69 or 1970, Montclair. And then of course, Cape May, New Jersey, 76, Kip to Peak and so on. Lots and lots of these hawk sites are now counting hawks instead of, um, you know, counting dead hawks. All right, so remember, I was born in 71, 1974. A very important organization comes online. Hamana, which Hawk Migration Association of North America. So the very first meeting brought 300 hawk watchers together from North America with uh, these goals that they, they, they decided upon. And that is to create formal network of observers throughout North America and standardized protocols so that data taken in one state or one hawk site would be comparable to other sites and create a central clearinghouse for that data. And making that data available to the public and professionals. So we now have citizen science. And all of this is going to have the overarching goal of estimating raptor populations. And if we look at this beautiful sticker over here, I love it. This is the 40th anniversary. Of, I think this, I could be wrong. Maybe this, I did go to this celebration. But I think that might've been Braddock Bay. I could be wrong, but regardless, uh, 40 years, we're past that now. Pretty awesome. All right. Now, how did all of this come about? How did counting hawks come about? Well, now that Hamana is established, uh, we have, and I had to steal this slide from Holiday Beach because uh, I, I never saw the, the infamous green sheets. And remember, the green sheets are from the Hawk Migration Association of North America. And up here, 
you would have your environmental data that you would record for every hour that you are watching hawks, you are counting, and then the various species going down that you might uh, see on that particular day. Now, these green sheets were pretty awesome. Of course, they would be dated up here and of the location and, and who was actually in charge and the address and things of that nature. Well, think about this. You fill this out. And we're talking years and years ago. We don't have or anything like that. In fact, some of you that are old enough, and I'm sure we have some of those people on the, on the line, will remember long distance used to be an expensive thing. So how would we get this information to others? Well, you could either send this in or call it in. Uh, but, you know, we expect that news happens and we should be able to find out about it instantly. But think about this. We would have hawk migration studies. This is what the current, um, in, you know, issues look like. A beautiful cover here. And, and this is our very own Vic um, who's taking this beautiful picture here. But this is what the, uh, the old uh, hawk migration studies covers look like. And you would get this. And this is from 89. And um, you would be able to look in there and finally be able to see what the data that everyone collected was. Now, Allegheny Front Hawk Watch is my hawk watch. And this is a collection that I have at home, um, all of the issues uh, which were donated by Chi and Cohn from the Allegheny Front. And uh, he was a compiler for a long time. There's Allegheny Front right here. I, uh, this is the very first time, and I'm gonna zoom in on this. Uh, this is Allegheny Front's first entry, as far as I can tell, was in November of 96. And right here, uh, we got nine golden eagles on this day of 5.7 hours counting. And there were only 22 birds counted that day. That's when Allegheny Front really took off, when we started seeing, wow, wow there's real numbers of golden eagles here. So that's really what golden eagles, I'm sorry, the Allegheny Front is known for, is the golden eagles. Um, but something happens in year 2000. A man named Jason birthed this new site, hawkcount.org. And it is going to allow everyone to upload their data instantly. And now everybody has access to this data. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful display where you can see, you don't have to wait. Remember, when we were talking about getting hawk migration studies, that might be six months behind, right? So, you know, if we're done in December, you might not get the next issue until June or July. And so if you, ha if you don't have a, a nice connection to all the other hawk counters, you might have a difficult time knowing what kind of year they had. All of that changes with hawkcount.org. And, um, and, and if you've never been on here before, you can just type in hawkcount.org and up pops, pops this spectacular display. Easy to read. It tells you everything you need to know. So think of this as being our general template. Now, this particular day is November 14th, 2017. I just chose this day. And I'm going to use Allegheny Front's data. I've talked to their president. He said it was fine to use it, so we'll go with it. And the official counter of the day is Brian Wargo. And uh, look at this. We had 157 red tail hawks on that day. Um, that's a really nice number of red tails. And uh, imagine how exciting it would be to be a site, oh, in the fall, and you were a little bit south of the Allegheny Front, you might say, oh, they're coming, right? You could see that. You might expect the next day. And it, it told you all the basic information, you know, the time you started, uh, how long you were out there, and the observers here, you know, Paul Fritz. And when Paul Fritz is at your site, that's a big deal, right? And then you've got Tom and Janet Cool and Bob Stewart, who's our vice president. He is uh, going to be there, along with so many others. And this gives credibility to the Hawk sites also. It's a wonderful way of saying, oh, I wonder who was counting that day. Oh, that's interesting. You know, uh, this particular counter, I know how excellent they are. So we get to know each other through looking at each other's data. Um, either way, we now have a way 
for everyone to get connected around Hawk Data. Uh, and it's a wonderful thing. Now, every site has their own way of, of um, taking this data as raw data. I, I made this particular sheet and I like it because I made it, or right? it's customized to me. But everyone has, every site has their own sheet. And um, the official one at the Allegheny front looks a little bit different, but you could see a lot of this comes right from the green sheets. And some of the things I like is uh, I can put who the observers are for that day. Uh, we have some of our regular non raptors that we like to keep track of. And as most have, they have comments section and now many hawk sites are also counting monarchs. We've, we've agreed that it just adds joy to our life, so why not? Okay, let's go back to the, the main dashboard for hawkcount.org, which should be the first place that you go. A couple things you want to realize right away. The Hamana logo right there. Hawk count is the pride and joy of Hamana. Um, and let's look right away. What do we see here? Well, we see a map of the United States here, okay, right here. You can also go over and click find a Hawk Watch. If you've never done this before, it's this easy. I'm gonna click to the next screen and I'm gonna say, I wanna pick from here. I'm gonna end up, and, and depending on what device you're on, if you're on a phone, if you're on a tablet, or if you're on a computer, this is gonna look different. So on, on your view here, it might not show the states, but it's all of North America. Um, I can click up here and uh, go to Hawk Watch profile if I wanted to. And I can also zoom out, and this is what it looks like. So you could see the entire United States right here. And you can click on your state. You could also go down here and say, oh, I want Delaware. And I know this is small. We'll zoom right back in. Or you can go to go to a particular Hawk Watch. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna pull down off of this menu right here and I'm gonna click the Allegheny Front Hawk Watch. And let's see what comes up. Right away, you'll see Allegheny Front, you'll see where we're located, um, some important coordinates, and then there's a map here. Now, my map is gonna get cut off on this particular display. They're all gonna look a little bit different, um, but that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to scroll down a little bit so you can see the rest up top. We would still have our, our map up here. we got a couple pictures. Here's our site contact. You would contact Bob Stewart. He's been our compiler for a very long time. Here's information about our site. When we're open, we do spring and fall. A little bit about our history and um, topography, things of that nature. So I can go down a little bit further and zoom out just to let you know that all the information is there, no matter what kind of device you're on. On a phone, you might have to do another click to say, oh, I'd like to see this also. But understand, this major platform here has all of the important information that you have. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back in so we can see what's going on here. And everything that I just showed you is on this general tab right here. Now, that general tab gives you general information. But now let's click over on migration timing. So when I click on that, and we'll use Allegheny Front again, this screen comes up. I'll zoom in in a second. But if you're looking from the outside, you'll notice over here we've got green and orange. Green, this is going to be spring data. This is going to be fall data. Most sites are either going to have the orange or they're going to have the green. Allegheny Front does both. We have maximum daily counts here. We've got season counts and then we've got our species. And um, you can always go up and, and look at the abbreviations, but um, they're, they're all spelled out for us here. So I'm going to zoom in and that should be a little easier easier for us to see. Again, I'm going to just look at golden eagles here because golden eagles are uh, what we take, you know, the greatest joy at the Allegheny Front with. And you'll notice that in the spring, you might see golden eagles migrating north again in February, but really March shows you when they're peaking. And then um, in the fall, your chances of seeing a golden eagle at the Allegheny Front are very small in August. Basically, you're not going to see them. September you might, but look at October and then November. 
that's when we get our search. This is a great tool for letting people know, oh, if I'm going to go to a site, I should be looking at these particular days if I want to see a particular species. Over here, this is uh, pretty awesome. Um, October 24th, 2015, we had 74 golden eagles in one day. And then 2018, we had 66, uh, 61 in 2011. And actually this year, um, I'll go to that day, we had 59 golden eagles again. Um, now here's something that's unusual with the Allegheny Front, where it says maximum, uh, we have 386. That's because we had 320 in the fall and 66 in the spring. So it's giving the total for the year, okay? Uh, but we average about 233 a year. All right, and all your different species there are, are there, okay? So that's a wonderful feature of hawkout.com. And if we go right back to our standard display, we'll just always go back to our main dashboard here for the Allegheny front. But you could choose this for any site. Again, you could just go to find a hawk watch or you can go to main um, and that'll take you back where you can pick that up. Uh, I wanna go to this uh, data inventory right here. So if I click on data inventory for the Allegheny front, interesting things. You'll see that we have 24 years of data and over here, you could see 97 to 2000, uh, 2020, I should say. And they're color coded. Do we have hourly that data? Do we have daily totals? Like we just giving you the totals for the day or is it mixed? Allegheny Front uh, and so many other sites pride ourselves on doing hourly totals. It's very, very important for researchers. So I'm just gonna click on 2019 uh, right here and let's see what comes up. So for 2019, we started December, or I'm sorry, February 15th, and we'll end sometime in December. I'm not gonna scroll down. I think you can see this, okay? Um, so uh, let's just look at a few things here. A couple things I'll point out. First of all, um, do you see this September 13th is a different color uh, square than all the others. So let's find out what that is. I just click right on there. If I click on the 13th of September, up comes data for December, I'm sorry, 17th. The reason why it looked different is because there was no count conducted. Why? Because we had dense fog and rain all day and the raptors aren't going to fly in that. So you can go back and you can see uh, if there are particular days where there might have been a counter there, but we're not counting because of the weather. So that was September 13th right there. Let me pick another day since we're going to talk about Golden Eagles a little bit. Let's go to November 16th right here. I'm the Saturday counter, so I'm there every Saturday. And so if I click on there, this is an interesting day. First of all, I want you to note that I'm starting at 8 in the morning, so and then I'm going till six in the evening. So you can tell it's a long day. And you might be wondering, why is it a long day? Well, we've got a couple turkey vultures throughout the day. Bald eagles are three. Oh, that's not bad. Northern harrier, Cooper's hawk two, uh, red-shouldered hawk. Uh, and by the way, I'm looking, there's a lot of observers here, a lot of people here. And if I go down lower, there's gonna be a lot of visitors. I wonder why. Well, oh, 52 red-tailed hawks. That's not it. Look at this. We had 59 golden eagles that day, okay? And it's nice when you have uh, other observers helping you there. You know, some, um, you know, starting with Adam. We've got several of our counters there on their day off. Bob Stewart's counter. Dave is a counter. Deb's a counter. Ed's a counter. Flaments work counters. Um, Jim Rocco's a counter. And then we got Joe Kelly, Joe Sabo. They love their golden eagles. They're like journey people. They just follow the eagles. And of course, we got Rosemary and the Flaments and Tom and Janet Cool, which um, excellent birders. You know, when you have observers listed here, um, it's really a wonderful thing to see what that community is doing. And when you list 59 golden eagles, it's nice to know that you had that many witnesses. It's just a wonderful community that we build. All right. Um, so let me just show you are going to 
um, with, remember we had the Golden Bald Eagle Treaty um, or Protection Act. We, we give them a special status and we count them. A lot of researchers need to know specifically about the golden eagles or the bald eagles. So not only do we list the golden eagles, but we give a time that they were coming through and we also age them, okay? So uh, now if, if I just scroll down on this screen, you'll notice that it's gonna give the hourly data. And you'll notice right away that this is the first hour. Oh, I wanna go back and just mention mention something. This is something that all hawks also look at. Weather, strong east wind all day with cold temperatures almost reaching zero degrees Celsius. If you've been to the Allegheny front and you're there on an east day, and we're talking about 15 mile an hour winds um, at negative 4.1, that's 25 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. This is a 12 degree wind chill out here. Uh, it's going to be a very, very cold day. But um, we're going to stand out there for 10 hours. Why? Because look what we got in the first hour. We got four golden eagles right away. And here's another thing that's rather important. Look, I'm the official counter, but Joe Kelly, I don't know if anyone loves golden eagles more than Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly shows up for as early as we open and stay as late as we stay because he wants to see the golden eagles. And he picked the right day, he's strategic, and uh, he got the four eagles right away. And I was so happy he was, it was there because I almost missed one of the earlier birds because normally we don't get uh, a big flight until a little later in the day. This day they were coming through early and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Anyhow, this is just one hour and you can see, I'm gonna zoom out. You can see uh, this is the next hour and the next hour. All of this is listed for everyone to be able to see. All right, so um, now when I think back on this, all I ever think about is, is, is how cold it is. Let me give you a little bit of background of my normal days. Uh, my normal days, I am a physics teacher. And you'll notice that I'm warm here, right? I'm safe, I'm able to think clearly. I don't have hypothermia at this point. Um, so I do this during the day, but then after this, on a Friday, we end up heading up to the Allegheny Front, which might look like this during Golden Eagle season. If it looks cold, you're right. It's cold and we're just getting there. The sun's about to go down. Any last remnants of heat we had are going away. This is the owl mobile. That's Dave Darney. He's our owl bander. And then we end up banding owls at night. And look, I still look warm. I'm doing okay. But after a few hours, I'm gonna be cold. And of course, I'm going to show you which owl this is. This is a long-eared owl, and that's Dave, and he never wears gloves, no matter how cold it gets. Okay, enough of that. Enough of the distractions. Let's get back to counting the hawks, although I love that bird. Okay, so this bird is a golden eagle. Now, if, you, if any of you have seen Josh Haas's presentation, you know, you're like, oh, Josh Haas and all his beautiful pictures, right? I'm out here working, okay? I need to take that picture there so I can identify it in case I can. I might be able to see something in the pictures. Um, so anyhow, um, that golden eagle, that's not my first bird of the day because I missed the first bird of the day with the camera. Thankfully, Joe Kelly, uh, here, I'll show you in the next slide here. Uh, the first bird of the day was this 801 bird right here. And if it wasn't for Joe Kelly, I would have missed that bird. He's like, there's a bird out there. Like, oh, thank you, Joe, right? And by the time I, I saw it, it was already going away. Of course, we knew it was a golden eagle, but I couldn't age it. Um, and, and Joe didn't get on it till, till the end either. So um, we put that as an unaged bird, okay? Um, so we do that for each and every one of these. Now, I want to just point out that I am going to use two instruments primarily, my binoculars and the camera. Uh, some hawk watchers will only use binos. Some only want to use a camera. Some will only want to use a scope, right? I always go for my binos on my left hand, and then I've got my camera on the right. Camera's beautiful. If you can get a picture, you can look at it after the bird passes, but nothing like your bino. So it's always that trade-off. Now, just so you know, this is probably early September, and I'm already wearing a coat, and I'm wearing gloves because it's getting cold already. Maybe not for everyone, but if you stand out there long enough, you will. 
I don't normally look like this, and we normally don't have these leaves behind us. This is what I, you're going to identify me as. This is what I usually look like. I am, you know, absolutely bundled up here. I've been wearing masks way before Corona made masks popular. Why? And some people have said, you know, you kind of look like a terrorist dressing that way. I am freezing to death. That is why I dress like that. And the mask, it keeps my snoot from freezing also. When my nose gets cold and it starts to drip, it's just a pain. So I wear a mask and it helps keep me warm. Some days I'll even wear goggles. I'm kind of kidding, but whatever. Anyhow, um, so this is what I normally look like. And I've, you know, got the binos and I usually have, um, you know, a camera there too. And by the way, this is a book that, that talks very much about what hawk watchers do. And I would say at least half the chapters, I'm trying to think if every chapter has something about hawkcount.org. Again, the centrality of hawkcount.org to this whole endeavor of hawk watching cannot be understated. Okay, let me go back to the bird data here. And let's look at another bird here from this same day. This is a 317 juvenile golden eagle. And again, I'm not Josh Haas. I'm just an average hawk downer. So when I show you this picture, understand I'm doing this for identification. Okay, there we go. Um, this is uh, an easier ID. Now I've zoomed in on this and cropped this picture, but let's just look at this golden eagle. We can see that we've got some white in uh, looks like the base of primary one and the base of secondary feather one. And then uh, I'm missing, looks like secondary two, but regardless, you can see these nice pointed biceps here. And we have our white that goes from one side of the tail to the other. Pretty confident this is a juvenile golden eagle. Okay, so we would mark that. All right. And so that's how we mark uh, each bird. And all of you don't have to be there for you to understand what kind of day we had. All right, let's go back to our, um, our inventory here. And I'm gonna look at November 30th. Why? Because look at December 1st. December 1st is one of those dark gray blocks. What is that all about? Well, that gray block tells us something was happening there. So let me go to November 30th. This is another great thing about hawkcount.org. Look, I'm gonna go right to it. It looks like an average day. Look, I've got um, 2019, seven and a half hours. Oh, look, we had 10 golden eagles, right? So sometimes you wanna click on this button right here where the, it's blue for a hyperlink. Let's go to 1130, which is November 30th. And roll, there we go. All right, look at this, next day forecast predicted ice storms may produce dangerous conditions. So the Hawk Watch will most likely be closed. This is another small feature of this hawkcount.org that makes all of our lives better. You know, don't go up the next day. If there's an ice storm, more than likely we're not gonna be open, okay? So a wonderful, wonderful feature, as is this. You see this November, 2019 totals. And I'm going to go over, there's our 179 golden eagles that we have for the season. Look at that. We only had 563 raptors all of November, but 179 are golden eagles. If you click on this past November totals, click on that, voila, it's like magic. You see every single November from, you know, when our first dates of, of 97, all the way to the current season, okay? And this is for the fall. <clears throat> um, the spring would already be in there. And you can see, look, again, we'll just focus on the Golden Eagles. We had 179 and then 71. And these are just for November. You can compare every month. Just a wonderful, wonderful feature of this hawkcount.org. Um, remember, this was almost inaccessible years ago. You, you would have to cut out some of your paperwork and try to put all this together. All right, but there's another feature I wanna look at. Look at this one, past fall totals. So if I click on that, we can see the total for every season going back as far as you wanna go. Notice we have 
our Golden Eagles. Totals for the year, 215, 194, 194, 138, 320, 127. Now, 320 was our big year. That's the one we always talk about. We, we always remember that. We, we rarely remember that 127 the year before that, okay? All right, so let me go back to our main display here. And uh, as, in case you don't know, Hamana, you know, who is running Hawkhound, um, we only have one and a half employees uh, or staff members. Uh, everyone else is doing volunteer work, which means all of the money that we're getting is essentially from donations and sponsors and things of that nature. So um, this is something that Hawkhound has on the page. This Hawk Count page is sponsored. And by the way, any of you can sponsor any page. You can just sponsor Amana, whatever you'd like. But this is a nice little um, give back that Amana and Hawk Count do. Look, Allegheny Plateau Audubon Society. Uh, they are going to sponsor at the Falcon level, which is like, I think, uh, $500 level or something like that. And what do you get? Well, look, this is a hyperlink. And if I click on this hyperlink, all right, I can go to the Allegheny Plateau Audubon's official page. Okay. Now, do you remember how most of us remember that 320 gold niggles and not the 127? Like my pictures of my gold niggles that I was taking a picture of. Let's go to the website. Let me click right on here and boom, up comes the Allegheny Plateau Audubon Society, right? Now look at our gold niggles. This is what we all see every day, right? But we just don't capture it. This is a beautiful picture taken by our very own counter, Dave Poter, the Allegheny Front Hawk Watch. Just an iconic picture. Um, most people can't believe it's real. It's real though, let me tell you. But either way, do you see how by sponsoring um, a page on Hawk Count, you can get um, more, tra not more travelers coming to your site to see what you have to say. So it's a wonderful feature. So feel free, feel free to um, sponsor. Now, Bob Stewart up here, Bob Stewart also sponsors the page. Bob is a behind the scenes guy. If you go to Allegheny Front Hawk Watch, the reason why it's running the way it's running is because of Bob Stewart, okay? Um, me, on the other hand, um, I also sponsor at a lower level or at the sipper level, but it allows me to have people say, oh, I think I remember this guy. And if I click on, on my name here, uh, I can, whoa, whoa, got a little crazy there. Uh, there we go. Am, am I back to normal there, Josh? I hope so. Um, okay. I think, I think you're okay. We just want to just give you a time check. It is uh, 1246. So want to yeah. open up some questions here in the next five or 10 minutes, if you're able to make that happen. I will be there. Promise okay. you. Thank you. Um, it's great. So I, I can go to my site. There's the book that I have and so on. Um, you know, so again, if you sponsor, you can get a link. Let's go back to this um, home site again. And I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit. One of the last things that we want to talk about very quickly is this RPI index. RPI. This is a very, very important one. Notice that we've got Hamana, Hawk Mountain Sanctuary, Hawk Watch International, Bird Studies Canada. We have a partnership between these four leading Hawk Watch migration research organizations. And they started putting out this Raptor Population Index, first analysis 2007. Many of your uh, sites are now going to be getting the, the very latest version of this. And very important, it's to produce statistically defensible indices of annual abundance and trends for each species of migratory raptor from as many count sites as possible. And we want to update that as quickly as possible. And we want to, and this is so important, make these results widely available to uh, participating count sites, the scientific community, uh, conservation agencies and the public. All right. So very, very for pure science, RPI, which comes directly out of the data that we collect and that all of you are collecting with hotcount.org. Very quickly, I just want to show you uh, how to read these because a lot of people don't know how. Let's just look at our Golden Eagle numbers here. I'm going to put one of my pictures on here. I mean, as a physics teacher, I know if I put numbers on a screen, people are going to zone out. Look, 2015, we had 320 goldens. 2014, we had 127. I'm going to take these numbers very quickly, put them in a quick scatter plot. I think most of us are comfortable reading the graph. There's our 320 
uh, total number of Golden Eagles for 2015. And the year before that, we had 127. And then we have this green line here that shows us, hey, it looks like the Eagles are, you know, improving a little bit in their numbers. Look, RPI is doing this. They're doing it in a scientific fashion. Not everyone's a scientist. Not everyone's a statistician. But when you see this population index, and you'll see this blue line, looks a little bit like that green line we had, and then there's our dots. When you're reading these in indices, just understand that um, each one of these dots is going to have a confidence interval. And the population index itself is the average birds per day that you would expect to see at that site on any particular hawk day um, on any one of these years. It gets a little technical. You can go to RPI, um, but I wanted to just show you up here. It basically shows golden eagles at the Allegheny Front improving 4.21% from 20, uh, 2002 to 2016. And if you looked at the interval of 2006 to 2016, it's actually a little bit better. Very quickly, I'm just going to overlay the two of them together. See the green line? See the blue line? When you look at RPI, think of it as a general trend that you can look at. Some people get, um, you know, a little bit intimidated by population index, but don't. It's just like a trend of your uh, eagles or any every other species. They should be on your site um, for uh for each hawk watch now we don't get this every year so as the eastern flyway editor i devise this this is how i write the reports um i send these out to every site so you can give me feedback you can see our golden eagles also showing that trend going up a little unfortunately northern harrier down red tail hawk down rough legged down red shoulder down cooper's down a uh, goshawk's down kestrel down so either way i make these and I simply configure that information into a small paragraph or two for each site. This is Hawk um, Migration Studies, which all of you can now get, if you're a sponsor or not. If you go right to hawkcount.org, click on the Hamana tab right here. It'll take you to Hamana site. You can go to resources right there. Oh, I did it again. Uh, let me go to resources here, click on that, come down, Hawk Migration Studies, and you can look at some of our digital editions. And if you're not a member, you might see an older edition, but it's a wonderful resource that all of you should be aware of. All of this is about hawkcount.org. It's everything, everything in hawk watching. So always go to hawkcount.org or go to Hanana, either one. And uh, these are just some of the tabs. If you are a new site, there's information there. If you're logging in, you can log in. You can requ request sites. You can do all of this. And by the way, Jason will get back to you nearly immediately. It is just an awesome resource for the hawk watching community. And again, its centrality to hawk watching cannot be overstated. Okay, we are trying to keep this short. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, we can take some questions. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. So let's open the floor for some questions. Uh, looks like Carl, you're unmuted. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I had a question, just an observation. Um, I'm located at uh, uh, just west of State College on top of Bald Eagle Ridge. And uh, I've always known that uh, I've been interested in raptors since 1952. My uh, high school class uh, sponsored a trip to Hawk Mountain. And that's where I got started with Maurice Brown up there. I still have a copy of his book that's autographed, The Hawks Aloft. And, but I've been interested in the eagles. I got into uh, soaring, so I fly with the, the eagles and, and the hawks and so forth. And um, I have a fal uh, I'm a falconer, so I have a golden eagle permit as well. I've never exercised that part of it. But we did a, I think you probably know, we did a watch here last fall. And it confirmed what I thought. There's a big golden eagle migration down through Bald Eagle Valley. And that, and, uh, never had an official count. We had a paid counter uh, this last fall. We saw 346 uh, Golden Eagles go by. So oh, we, we, we know. Everybody knows. Yeah. Um, what, what, actually, at the Kittatinning Roundtable discussion coming up on Saturday, 
we're going to be talking about this site that you're talking about, this bald eagle site that is just the Michael Jordan coming onto the court while everyone else was trying to play basketball. Suddenly, yeah. bald eagle comes along. Wow. Yeah, well, you, you probably know the name of Trish Miller. Uh, she, she trapped, of course. Yeah, she trapped her first eagle here when she was getting her PhD at Penn State. Yeah. And I was actually, she was up there for about a week or so. I had the blinds. It was in October before the birds really started flying. I said, well, I'll go up and keep her company, see how it's going on. She'd been sitting up there solo for the longest time. I got up there and I yelled at her from the woods. that it's okay to come out. And she said, no, wait a minute. There's a hurry because there's a golden eagle coming down. So I ran into the blind and damn, we didn't catch that thing. <laughs> and she, yeah. she was up there two weeks. And I was up there two minutes and we caught an eagle. So I'll count, I'll count, I'll, I'll count is also a wonderful place to honor all of the great work that has been done by those that came before us. Uh, often those things will be mentioned on, you know, our comments and stuff like that. I so appreciate your story there, Carl. Yeah. We also, uh, are Carl, still on? Carl, I just wanted to say quickly that Nick Bolgiano has an article about that bald eagle count from last year and the upcoming issue of Hawk Migration Studies that'll be out mid-September. Yes, yeah, agreed. I, I read it every night in the fall, the hawk count. I just go out there and look at the, the Allegheny front. If we, you, you, the eagles go down Bald Eagle Valley for the most part. And if the winds are, as you know, if the winds are out of the southeast, they're going to go on the Allegheny front. If they're out of the northwest, they're going to come down Bald Eagle Ridge. That's just the way it works. It's, no winds and they thermal through maybe if they're not lazy. So, yeah. and, and Nick will also be presenting at uh, the kid attending round table. If you're interested, that'll be on Saturday through. Hockey okay. Hockey. Okay. Any other questions? Again, feel free to write in the chat window and we can verbalize those hard to see across 60, 70 people, uh, a hand go up, but uh, we'll do our best. By the way, that voice was Carolyn Hoffman, who um, was my boss for a long time, uh, you know, taking care of Amanda. So she's been uh, around and knows everyone and everything. So nice to hear from Carolyn. Okay, well, thank you so much, Brian. Uh, it was a wonderful introduction to hawkcount.org and, and 